Hello my crafty friends and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Now today I'm going to talk about stone paper. Two of my art journals from my latest release with Stamperia has stone paper inside. There is the A5 size as well as the A6 size and here is an example that I did last week. And I get so many questions about the properties of stone paper so that I thought that today would be a great idea to show you all different kinds of techniques and how this paper reacts with different mediums. So I hope this is informative and will help you decide if you actually want to give it a go. Now the good thing is that you can find the stone paper by Stamperia either in a form of a journal from my collection or you can get them separately as single sheets. So here is one of them. This is an A4 size and this is completely white but you get the option of silver stone paper as well as gold stone paper. Now look at it as faux leather. It is very durable and I'm going to demonstrate this today. And of course I will focus on the white stone paper since this is what I have inside my journals. This is 300 GSM if you are wondering about the thickness of the page and it is really pliable. I'm going to use my paper trimmer to cut out pieces so that I can demonstrate different techniques. And so here is the first thing that you can do with this paper. You can definitely cut it, although it is so durable, with your paper trimmer. So I cut a few pieces to have on hand and let's start to the first and most important thing of this paper. This is really durable and you cannot tear it. I'm going to try and show you. There is no way I can tear it with my fingers. This is a huge bonus on an art journal since you can really abuse it. You can be rough with it, you can crinkle it if you like, without worrying at all that it is going to tear or that you will ruin your art journal. Actually this page is kind of stiff when you start working with it, but the more you work with it, the more soft it becomes and more pliable. And as our friend Omar Falcini from Stamperia says, this is the only paper that you can do that. However, even though I couldn't tear it with my fingers, I could definitely cut it with my paper trimmer and of course I can use my scissors to cut out any shape that I like. And since we are talking about cutting, you can definitely use your dies to die cut shapes out of this paper. This is going to give you the opportunity to end up with shapes that are really durable and they are great to put together elements for the front of your albums, for covers or even for cards, knowing that they are not going to be destroyed no matter what. So for example, you can use, like I did here, your flower dies and put together lovely flowers to embellish your projects. And of course these are white, but I'm going to show you today all the different mediums that you can use to add color on this paper. And I know that you are thinking, Vicky, okay, you can cut it, but how can I do that on a journal? That's the beauty of using a journal that is made out of stone paper, since you can actually abuse it with no issues at all. So here I'm going to do some die cutting. I'm using the most intricate uh, die that I could find, obviously to make a point, but you can definitely use just a frame, a circle or a rectangle die, which is going to open up a window on what's on the next page. And it is a great way to create a page inside your journal. And you can see I'm doing my die cutting as I would normally do, but I would never do that with a paper journal because the page would tear for sure. And of course remember if the shapes didn't cut out all the way through, you won't be able to tear them off. So if they didn't cut out, just run it through one more time to make sure that you can abuse the paper now as much as you like. You can see I just tear them off without worrying at all and I end up with a lovely shape where you can see the background. And I absolutely love the fact that this is going to be the first page on this mini art journal. I will think of how I can work with it on another video. And since we are playing with die cutting and embossing machines, let's see if we can emboss this 
a stone paper. I'm just running one of my embossing uh, folders through this. No matter which uh, die cutting machine you have or embossing machine you have, I'm sure you get you know the sandwich for embossing. It is going to give you a beautiful result. So you can now add on top your paints. You can do waxes on top of it to bring out the um, texture of the paper, but it works beautifully. Now, this paper is waterproof, which means that I can pick up this piece of paper and stick it inside my jar, which is full of water, and nothing is going to happen on this. Think of it as plastic, however, it is environmentally friendly, since it is biodegradable by UV. Now, if you water it, you will find that it is more pliable and it becomes softer and easier for you to crinkle. I'm going to give it a go here, I'm going to crinkle it a lot, the more the better, and I'm going to leave it aside to dry because I'm planning to show you a fun leather technique at the end of this video. Now, as I was filming this video, I tried to think of all the different things that we may want to do on this paper. And I tried to use different mediums, different techniques. But if I forgot something and uh, you still have questions on uh, how this paper would work with a specific medium or technique, do let me know in the comments below. I will try to address them in future videos. Or if there are many questions, I can put together a part two video on stone paper. So let's talk on how you can color this paper. Now you can definitely go with your acrylic paints. These are acrylic paints by Stamperia from their Allegro collection, but any acrylic paints you have in your collection would work just fine. I haven't used gesso or any type of primer and I'm applying the paint directly on top with a brush that has no water at all and it works just fine. Of course you can definitely prime it but you see it doesn't matter because it doesn't bleed at the back. Another big bonus of stone paper is that it takes a lot of heat with no issues at all. No matter how much you use your heat gun it's going to stay nice and flat. You can also go on top of it with paste. Here I'm just using my modeling paste. This is volume paste through a stencil, but you can definitely use loads of paste. It is going to handle just fine without warping at all. You can go with crackle paste. You can go with texture paste. It is going to be just fine. And now let's see how it reacts with sprays. This is a spray paint. Any spray that you like, you can go over it. It's going to stick just fine. Remember, you can also add as much of water as you like with no issues, so you can easily move it around. It doesn't uh, bleed at the back, but that really depends on uh, the type of spray that you are using and the amount of it, of course. But I'm going to show you later on what you can do if it bleeds at the back. So again, I'm going to use my heat gun and the um, spray that I used here is Aqua Color by Stamperia, which is permanent. You can see no issues with warping. It is completely flat. And of course, you can go ahead and use your inks to stamp on top of that. You can definitely go with dye inks like I'm doing here. You can go with permanent inks or you can even go with pigment inks, but you do have to wait for them to dry a little. Another thing that you can do on stone paper is heat embossing. Remember, it takes heat beautifully since it stays flat no matter how much of a heat you apply. So this is a great technique, especially on this paper. So here I used embossing ink. I applied on top gold embossing powder. And with my heat can, I'm melting the powder. Although it is kind of uh, non-porous, you see I didn't have any issues with static electricity that I would get with embossing powder on top of acetate. And it stayed flat. Now let's see how it reacts with alcohol medium. And you can find alcohol in a form of a marker. And you can see how it works here. Keep in mind this paper is not made to work with alcohol markers. However, it doesn't bleed. And uh, you can kind of uh, apply one layer and blend the colors together with no issues at all. And I know you are wondering how it works with alcohol links, so let's try them out. And as you can see, it reacts like normal paper. I just applied that on dry paper here. And uh, it bleeds at the back just any other paper would do. 
Now let's try them with alcohol. I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol on top of the surface and then apply on top the ink. You will find that it moves easier. I can move the ink with the alcohol and create a lovely background. However, keep in mind that it does bleed at the back. Now, if I wanted to have a background that was made with alcohol inks on my journal, I would work on a separate Yupo paper, for example, and then stick it on top of my page. But if you want to work with alcohol inks directly inside your journal on your page, then all you can do for the back is just cover it up with your acrylic paint and continue as nothing happened at the back. A couple of layers is going to cover it up completely. Other ways to cover up your mess at the back would be to use scrapbook paper and stick on top of that, or you can go with rice paper. Here I'm using one of my rabbons. You will see that it sticks beautifully on top of stone paper, although it feels like leather, as if it has a coating on top, it sticks just fine. Best thing about the rabbons is that they are completely matte, and it really looks as if you stamp that design there. Now I know you are wondering how it works with watercolors. Keep in mind this is not a watercolor paper, however it does work. I just grab my palette here and I'm applying it with a brush. Now I want to see if I can lift some color by adding some splatter, so this is just water that I am applying. And with a paper towel I'm going to blot the excess water and I can see that I can lift color which makes it possible to do this great technique. Now since I'm experimenting I want to see if I can move the color with my baby wipe and I'm just wiping it off and you can see I can get a softer look but I cannot remove it completely with a baby wipe. And here is where I realized another bonus of working on stone paper. You can rub it with a baby wipe or with water as much as you like and it will never going to peel off. Which means that if you use masking tape or any other tape that you want to use on top of a paper, that it is more sticky than you actually want. When you peel it off, it's not going to pick up any fibers. This is great if you like working with washi tape and change your mind a lot. You can easily peel them off and stick them on another area. And of course we need to see if we can blend colors on top of some paper. So here I'm using my dye ink pads and you will see that it blends beautifully no matter what type of ink you use, distress ink, distress oxides, dye inks, they work beautifully just because stone paper doesn't absorb the ink instantly and uh, the blending tool glides over it. And again here I want to check out how the leaf technique is going to work, so that's why I'm adding some water splashes. Again I'm going to blot them with my paper towel and you can see that it works beautifully. And do you remember that piece of paper that we crinkled in the beginning? Now it's time to do that uh, leather technique and this paper really helps you do this. It's not the colors that I'm working with, it is the paper. So after having all those crinkles, I'm going to apply a light brown or a yellowish color. This is Pino if you want to know the exact name and it is from the Stamperia Aquacolor collection. I am applying a first layer to cover it up completely and you can see how it uh, goes darker where all those crinkles are. Then I'm going to apply my heat and make sure that this first layer is completely dry before I go ahead and use the leather color on top of it. And again I'm going to use my heat gun to make sure that this layer is completely dry and you can build up as many layers of this darker color as you want to make it even darker. So I'm going to show you how you can darken up just one edge. I'm just going directly with my brush only up there. You can go ahead and use different shades of brown. You will always end up with an amazing leather looking piece of paper just because it is stone paper and creates those wrinkles.
Now I have another fun technique for you. This time I'm using vintage paste. This is an amazing paste by Antonis Janidakis. It is oil based, so you need to dilute it either with mineral spirit or with turpentine. Here I'm using some mineral spirit, which I'm going to apply a little bit with my pipette. And now I will grab a brush and I will cover up completely this background with vintage paste. Since vintage paste is oil based and I do use turpentine or mineral spirit as well, it is definitely a medium that I would avoid to use inside a paper journal. But with stone paper journal it is completely different. I am going to show you how it looks and it gives an amazing effect. I always wanted to try it but I was afraid to work on paper. But now that I have my stone paper journal I can finally give it a go and play with this technique as much as I want. So here I'm just grabbing a paper towel and I will go over it and you can remove as much as you like. It is going to give that edge look, it is going to go inside those nooks and crannies. And of course the more texture and dimension you have on your background, the more it's going to pick up that brown look and feel. Other things that you can do on your stone paper page on an art journal is to definitely stick rice paper. It is a great way to start a new page and I'm going to show you here how nicely it sticks down. I am using water so that I know exactly where I need to cut out this rice paper. It makes it easier this way. And then I'm going to stick it down with my mixed media glue. Use any type of glue that you have as long as you go underneath and on top of your rice paper. This is going to seal it down at the same time. Of course to start a page you can always stick down scrapbook paper but rice paper is so thin and it blends nicely with uh, your background so it uh, looks as if that uh, stone paper is printed. Now another thing that you can do is to use your scissors and cut out elements after sticking them on top. This way you will end up with an element that is really durable. It works as a chipboard but it is waterproof now since we did add mixed media glue on top of it as well. So it would make a great element for the top of an album, for a card, a 3D canvas, really dimensional and really durable. And I left the most fun thing that you can do with stone paper for the last. You can actually use your sewing machine and create a real usable projects. This is a little pencil case that I did a while ago and I did share a video, it's been years since then, it is still very durable, it holds my crayons inside. I did use sprays, I used uh, modeling paste with um, stencils, even a zipper and it holds just fine. If you want to see that video, here is a link to it. I hope the video was helpful, if you still have questions, leave them down below, don't forget to like. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.